I wanted to go over some of the plants we didn't get a chance to see this quarter. This is Arctostaphylus X media, which is the hybrid Kinnikinnik. Again, the Ericaceae, and this is actually a naturally occurring hybrid between bristly manzanita and Kinnikinnik. Has a bluish green color to it. The flowers are pink. It's a great ground cover for steep slopes. It works well for seaside plantings. It's also tolerant to deer damage and it needs full sun. So here's that steep slope I was just talking about. And here's a close up on the flowers. Really pretty little plant. Here's some more close ups on the foliage. You can see there's a light uh, kind of ciliate margin on these guys. Berberus belii, leatherleaf mahonia, Berberidaceae. This is multi stem, so this is the one that's, uh, it may resemble our X hortensis. However, X hortensis usually has one main stem and it's very vertical. This is multi stemmed, it can be irregular can be up to 10 feet tall and the compound leaves are up to 18 inches long and the leaflets are five to eight pairs that are up to four inches long and the terminal leaflet can be up to eight inches long. The flowers are fragrant and they're on terminal racemes and the uh, blue fruit attracts birds. Okay so you can see this is a really irregular plant that whole shape and here's the beautiful fruit and there are the the leaves they're very very sharp and very very leathery okay buxus sinisa variety insularis korean boxwood this gets to be two feet tall has open growth probably less dense than the english boxwood the branches are slightly pubescent to the touch you can almost see that on the bottom picture the leaves are opposite, of course, ovate to oblong, so longer and narrower than Buxus sempervirens. One third to three quarters inches long. The margins are rolled and it will turn brown in winter. And on the left, you can see this is what it looks like in the summer, but it, this is what it looks like in the winter. It almost looks dead to me, but um, anyway, that's just the winter color. Camellia X. Williams eye and cultivars in the TAC. This is a cross between Camellia salunensis and Camellia japonica. Has a very long blooming period, four to five months. And one of the parents has elliptical pointed leaves. And as we know, Camellia japonica has rounded leaves. Some cultivars are more hardy than others. And roughly speaking, because there's a lot of different cultivars, uh, 8 to 15 feet tall with a spread to 8 to 12 feet and this particular cultivar is donation. Okay, on the right here, that's also donation, but it kind of gives you a an idea of the growth. It's definitely tighter than the uh, Sasanqua and probably not quite as tight as Camellia japonica. And you can see the leaves here are a little bit narrower than the Camellia japonica. And this is Saint Yu. Okay, Catonia Catonia folius. This is the straight Catonia folius, the willow leaf Catonia And I wanted you to see this because we unfortunately we only have the ground cover on campus. This gets to be six to eight feet tall, spreading, arching, horizontal. You can see that growth on the left there. And here are the leaves, indented veins. So it looks like it's got kind of a wrinkled appearance. And here are these little rose-like flowers. Remember, it's in the rosaceae. And there it is with the fruit. Daphne neorum. Rock, Rose, or Garland Daphne. Our list says Garland D Daphne. Uh, Rock Daphne is the one I know it by. Timoliaceae, one to three feet across in a very loose mat or ground cover. 
Uh, the growth is very reminiscent of Ibris Semper Byron's. The leaves are alternate, simple, uh, about two and a half centimeters long, very narrow. The flowers are bright pink, about half inches across, and there, there are 68 flowers per umbel. Very fragrant and part shade and excellent drainage. And when I've used this, this is really a great rockery garden plant. Um, it really needs excellent drainage. So here's a close up on the flowers. And Daphne, you're going to have these four petaled flowers. And then on the right, you can see it's got kind of this silvery green foliage. And those are the buds. Fargesia robusta, clumping bamboo, poaceae, shiny dark leaves. And so it's a clumping bamboo, so it's not going to run like phyllostachys. The cane sheaths are white colored. It gets to be 15 tall, feet tall by 15 feet wide. Needs full sun to part shade. It can be drought tolerant once established, and it can use, tolerate just about any type of soil as long as there's good drainage. So here's a close up with the sheaths, and it's got a really nice soft look about it when it's uh, in, when you see it from a distance. Besides the the sheaths, it's very pretty. Okay, Hypericum hidcoat, hidcoat. Hypericum and Hypericaceae, and it's semi evergreen, although I've never seen it defoliate here. Um, but I guess if we had a, a really cold winter, it could be a problem. Two to, feet, two to five feet tall with a rounded form. The leaves are simple and opposite, and the leaves are green, the very dark green on top, light green underneath. The yellow flowers are from June to October, and sun to part shade as well as drought tolerant. I've never seen this one get rust, so if you like the yellow flowers, it might be worth checking this one out. So here's that underside that's lighter, and uh, you can see the leaf shape's a little bit different. Um, this picture with Hypericum hidcoat versus Hypericum calicinum. Hypericum calicinum has more of a fairly even shape all the way throughout and softer tip. And they both have yellow flowers, but you can see the calicinum has far more stamen, which are quite long, compared to the hypericum hidcoat. It's really a nice little shrub. Ilex cornuta dwarf burford or dwarf burford holly, aquafoliaceae. The leaves are alternate dark green, and they're bullate. And bullate means it's a rounded blistery projection on the surface and you can kind of see that it looks like you know it's almost bubbled a little bit the leaves are oblong and then they're actually the size of these leaves are parallel to each other there's a spine at the very tip the stems are very yellow green you want to protect them from yeah uh, afternoon sun and just some of the pests they may get are mites leaf miner scale, leaf rot, and powdery mildew. There's a pretty long list actually. And uh, you know, leaf miner happens with holly. It's a pretty common thing and it's not a big deal, but some of these other things can really cause some serious problems. And even though it says dwarf, it's six to eight feet tall. And it's parthenocarpic, which means the females are able to produce fruit without pollination. Okay, here's uh, the look of the uh, foliage here, and you know, it can be pretty attractive. On the right, this is kind of the form of it, kind of a rounded form. Lakothaway axillaris, or drooping Lakothaway ericaceae, two to four feet high by three to five feet tall, excuse me, wide. So you're going to have a spreading branch that has kind of a zigzag pattern when you look at it. The margins can be either entire or serrate. You can see in this picture they look like they're serrate. Very dark green above, paler green below, and then you have these urn-shaped flower clusters in the ax 
axle, so hence the name axillaris. The foliage can turn purple or red in the winter, and it prefers part shade, and it's extremely poisonous. Okay, here's the red growth on the left, and here is a nice picture of the flowers and the axles.